Las Vegas Raiders quarterback Derek Carr is better than Russell Wilson, according to Maurice Jones-Drew. Maurice Jones-Drew works for NFL Network and was a star running back with the Jacksonville Jaguars, but also spent the 2014 season with Derek Carr. So we do know there is possibly a little bias there. And we're going to go ahead and compare these two quarterbacks. You know, it's always funny. Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk likes to call Derek Carr phony. I don't buy this crap. He wouldn't play for any other team. I mean, come on, man. I think on one hand, he's a big phony. But on the other hand, I think he plays the role of the phony so well, he's kind of become that guy. By repetition of pretending to be that guy, he has kind of spoken it into existence. When he's not speaking in a fake country accent. Says he's not authentic and he has a fake Texas country accent and whatnot. But really, uh, how is he any more phony than Mr. Unlimited? Everybody has to have an ultra ego, right? And, and have- Broncos country, let's ride. Broncos country, let's ride. Let's ride. Broncos country, let's ride. We're Broncos country, and let's ride. Well, my boy. Yes, sir. Let's go. We in the orange, baby. My boy, Jew. I got one flow with me. One flow with me. Broncos country, let's ride. I don't know how you get any more phonier than that guy, to be completely honest. But we're going to get into their stats and also talk about the new signing at linebacker. We know Mika Kaiser went down just yesterday, so the Raiders decided to sign Curtis Bolton, former Oklahoma Sooner. We'll talk about him and his his history and more updates on the Las Vegas Raiders. Make sure you like this video if you have not already and subscribe to the Raiders Rundown for more Raiders content. By the way, we will be going live tomorrow, Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Pacific time, and we will be going live every Tuesday for this season at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time, so we hope to see you there. Make sure you turn on notifications on YouTube so you don't miss it. Maurice Jones-Drew said that Derek Carr is better than Russell Wilson. Awesome to see hype for Derek Carr, because you always hear you know, people like Colin Cowherd and a lot of people who are positive towards Derek Carr in the media, like Cowherd, they often praise him, but then they will say, oh, there's an asterisk here, because he's still the fourth best QB in the division of the AFC West. Oh, Justin Herbert is still better than Derek Carr, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes. And really, what really annoys me about people saying Justin Herbert is already better than Derek Carr, even though he's played like, what, two seasons? It's because everyone always says that Derek Carr is not a good QB because he does not have enough wins. When, however, he had more wins than Justin Herbert. He had more wins than him last year and actually played in the playoffs. So if wins are a QB stat, why don't you give that for Derek Carr? But you, do, you don't do it for Justin Herbert. Either way, cool to see this happen. And what's really interesting is you look at the numbers from both of these QBs over the past three years, you have to keep in mind the context. Yes, we know Russell Wilson has a Super Bowl ring, but I don't really think uh, the Seahawks won a Super Bowl because of Russell Wilson. I I think they did it a lot because of that amazing Legion of Boom defense and people like Marshawn Lynch. That's why I think they won a Super Bowl. But 2021, you see Derek Carr, 4,800 yards, 686 dropbacks there last year. Russell Wilson was out a few games, pretty much did 200 less uh, dropbacks than Derek Carr. And that's why you see Russell Wilson's numbers really decline. But interesting to note, Russell Wilson hasn't had 4,800 yards, (laughs) uh, you know, like Derek Carr in recent memory. Derek Carr had 4,100 yards in 2020 and also 4,000 in 2019. And Russell Wilson had about the same same amount of yards there, 4,200, 4,100. And then keep in mind, you know, 2019, 20, and 21, Russell Wilson has had Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. Now, it's not like he's always had the greatest tight end. He had Greg Olson last year, and the year before that, he had Will Disley. But he has two dominant wide receivers each of these past three years. And that's why I believe you see that 40 touchdowns in 2020. By the way, that was the, you know, the pandemic year. So it was kind of a weird season. No, no crowd noise for a lot of QBs. I think a lot of stats are really juked in 2020 when you look at it. And I, and I even say that for Derek Carr. I mean, having no crowd noise for him probably allowed him to, to get some extra touchdowns in 2020. And, and, and now we just talked about the weapons of Russell Wilson. Lock it. Metcalf, 2019 to 2021. Well, let's talk about the weapons for Derek Carr. Yes, you have Darren Waller each of these past three years. And like I said, Wilson only had Greg Olson and Will Disley as his tight end. You have a solid running back in Josh Jacobs while Russell Wilson has Chris Carson. But in terms of wide receiver, 2019, it's a rookie Hunter Renfro who broke his ribs midseason. And yes, he's still only a slot receiver. That's who you really have in 2019 
at wide receiver. Tyrell Williams, we know he dealt with some problems. And in 2019, we, we traded for Trevor Davis from the Packers, and he legit played so many games for us in 2019. That was Derek Carr's wide receivers, really. Uh, Trevor Davis, Marcel Aitman, stuff of that nature. In 2020, Nelson Aguilar, Henry Ruggs is still there, but he's really getting going and had a had kind of a slow start. Ruggs had that injury week one in 2020, and also due to the reduced practices in the season in 2020, Ruggs had trouble learning the offense. So it really was just a lot of Nelson Aguilar uh, action and, and Brian Edwards, and he also battled some injuries along with Henry Ruggs in 2020. Those were cars wide receivers with the addition of Hunter Renfro and last year. It, it was the Renfro show because Darren Waller even got banged up at that point. And so a wide receiver last year, it, it's, it's Zay Jones. You know, it's the Zay, it's the Zay Jones, Deshaun Jackson, Brian Edwards, because we know what happened to Rugs and all that stuff, right? Uh, and that's Carr's weapons. It's not DK Metcalf. It's not Tyler Lockett, a great speedster receiver. So Russell Wilson, I'm interested to see. I, I really do back up a lot of what Maurice Jones Drew is saying here. I think this could be the year where maybe some things change. Maybe some things change in the AFC West because, you know, Russell Wilson, he, he doesn't have a player like DK Metcalf on the Broncos, in my opinion. You got Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, who who was great, but has dealt with some injuries recently. Can we just can be, be completely honest? Like, that's what's really going on there. Um, and, and, and I just don't think you have uh, anybody like Metcalf in the Broncos receiving core, and I think it's going to show for Mr. Unlimited this upcoming year. Um, either way... Curtis Bolton signed by the Las Vegas Raiders after the injury to Mika Kaiser. And it, it should be interesting to see uh, how deep this guy really goes. He's, he's bounced around from a couple of teams over the past few years and, and really just ha- shined when he was with Oklahoma. However, only started one season out there with Oklahoma, nothing too intense, has not appeared in a regular season game in the NFL, but has appeared in preseason. He, he appeared with the Indianapolis Colts in 2021, where he got an interception and had about seven tackles. And then also with Green Bay in 2019, also had an interception in preseason along with seven tackles. So Curtis Bolton, probably going to be you know, just realistically a preseason body just because we have a lot of great linebackers. You saw Jayon Brown at the press conference today seemed very confident uh, in his role. Mentioned that he's not a rookie, which I thought was pretty funny. And then obviously you have the rising Divine Diablo and the Pro Bowl Denzel Perryman. We're going to need some depth. We're going to need some depth at linebacker. Darian Butler's in the mix as well. So perhaps that could be a, a role that Curtis Bolton carves out for himself on this team. He's 26 years old, drafted in 2019, mentioned before with the Oklahoma Sooners, and he was stoked to be with the Las Vegas Raiders. You saw him on Twitter today saying he just signed with his childhood team. Um, his pops was a diehard fan. And keep in mind, um, rest in peace to his father, Mr. Bolton. He did pass pass away with cancer while Bolton was in high school. So keep in mind that this stuff really does have an impact on how talented somebody can be when you face some type of adversity and you know how to handle that psychologically and move past it. Then, then things like football are easy. I mean, th- things like dealing with the pressure of football are easy in comparison to dealing with something so tragic like that. Ain't going to lie. I shed a tear or two. It's a blessing to just wear this gear. God is good. Uh, to the persistent long live Kurt. And that's great to see, man. This guy's literally shedding tears uh, because he's becoming a, a Raider. So how, how do you not root for this guy is what I'm saying. Curtis Bolton, the Oklahoma Sooner. We'll see how he does. Six foot, 228 pounds. Going to throw some cons here. And this was really interesting. Josh Jacobs has a, uh, an, a familiar relationship with Curtis Bolton. One of the knocks in Curtis Bolton in his draft profile in 2019 was uh, this third to last bullet point here. Alabama's Josh Jacobs ran through his tackle attempt. So had a bad game against Josh Jacobs. So they'll be reuniting in training camp this year. So that'll be interesting to see. Maybe, hey, maybe Curtis Bolton's going to get some revenge. I, I don't know. Maybe that could happen. But this guy does have some potential. Really good man covered duties in his draft profile. Really good at dropping into zone shadow spy as well. Um, and it might, it would, it'd be interesting to see. I mean, this is what he was in 2019. Obviously, things have changed and he has battled with some injuries while going through a couple of teams, uh, you know, with the Packers and, and, and then even the Colts as well. 
So if he could put it all together, perhaps he could make this 53-man roster. But it's just another man in the mix, another man in the mix in this epic month where you really just have to narrow down uh, w- what's going to happen with this team and who's going to make this team. And it all comes down to availability, right? Who who shines in certain moments and who fits with the, with the particular scheme. And it's going to be very hard to really perfectly predict. But as the weeks go on, we're going to get some roster cuts mid-August, and it's going to go week by week. We'll find out who are the 2022 Las Vegas Raiders. And if this team could really do something special this year, let me know what you think. Like this video if you haven't already and subscribe to the Raiders Rundown for more Raiders content. My name is Wi-Fi Willie. Peace out. And I hope you have a good one.